We're at Lake Mead and this is the audio for the Higgins boat. It's one of those boats that they use to land on the beach at Normandy during D-Day. This was a surplus boat that they sunk here a long time ago and scuba divers have been using this as a wreck to dive on. At one point there was 180 feet of water now this is very squishy as I'm walking through here. Maybe I will take a different route <laughs> to get to this boat instead of right through the squishy quicksand type earth. The entire lake was filled to its capacity to that line out there as recently as 2000, so 22 years ago. But this is it. You can get right up to it. I, th I think we might even if I took my shoes off, I might even be able to touch it. I think I could even take my shoes off and, and walk to it. It's so it's so close to uh, to the dry land now. Just be aware that you know there might be like nails. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now remember this this didn't land at Normandy during D-Day or anything. This was a surplus boat, but still uh, they they were using this as a wreck to dive on under 180 feet of water. So it would have been way above our heads for the scuba divers. But now it's right here and it's so close that if, if I wanted to get my boots wet, I could walk to that thing. I mean, I could actually come over to these rocks and put my hand on it. That's how close it is to the shoreline. And you can see that this is, uh, it's got a wooden shell to it with some, probably some steel underneath. I, th I think I might be able to, I don't want to damage the boat or really get onto it, but, um, ooh, very squishy. But it is so close to the shore here that I can actually walk out. It's very, very goopy right here. I can walk out and touch this thing and get to the, see what's on the inside. Like actually put the camera in there. I can't approach it from the other side because it's just way too deep over there. But I mean, just to think that this was 180 feet of water on top of this and it was a wreck that you could dive on. And now, I mean, all I have to do is pull up my pants and we can get right to it. That's a lot of water loss. Oh. There's also these kind of things. How old do you think this can is? It's under here. It's a bit of archaeology. Let's see. That's the old logo. Oh yeah, they haven't used that Diet Pepsi logo in a long time. And I mean, they advertise that NutraSweet is in there. Oh, wow. When did you start drinking this? Since they improved it. Oh, now it's got NutraSweet. Now, yeah. with no saccharin, 100% NutraSweet. So, uh, let's go over to Freddy's house. Wow, okay, look at that. He's why I didn't show up. Taste improved by Diet Pepsi. So, yeah, they, they NutraSweet was new. So they're advertising that th this has got a new thing called aspartame. Uh, it, was, it was sweetened with saccharin back in the 70s. And then according to Wikipedia, it prompted a shift in alternative sweetener aspartame, which was marketed as the brand NutraSweet in 1983. So this is possibly a diet Pepsi that's been sitting here since 1983. And now I'm the first person to hold it in my hand since the early Reagan administration. Very old Coors. I wish there was an easy way to figure out when this was from. Glass bottle. That's the last time we saw one of those. I found so many vintage bottles and cans and stuff. Here's another one. Oh! Here it is. Look at that. This is 1973. Look at this. They don't yeah. make slits in the can. 
I don't know if you can see this one, but it's, it says copyright 1973. This was here since at least then, if not like just a few years later. Copyright 1973. This has been sitting here at the bottom of the lake all that time. Oh, here's something. Diet Pepsi again. This one may have saccharin. Hold on. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at that. It's hard to read, but it does say sodium saccharin, and, and it doesn't um, it doesn't have anything that says aspartame or uh, Nutra Sweet. So that dates it at before 83. So somewhere 70s, early, early 80s. Okay, now I'm a tech geek, so I may be able to tell you exactly which model BlackBerry this is. Hi, I'm Bonnie Toss, senior editor at CNET.com, and today we're taking a first look See, at the Samsung is... Magnet. Uh, the Magnet is a basic messaging phone that first debuted at CTIA 2009. No, this is not a BlackBerry. It's, 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 a, it's a Samsung with a full QWERTY keyboard on it. And this was early 2000s, I would guess. Um, this is, uh, oh, this has got a SIM card in it. Uh, the Magnet offers great call quality and it's only $19.99 with a two year contract. So I'd recommend it for anyone looking for a basic, easy to use messaging phone.